You know, in a pre-Rona world, Spiral would already be in theaters by now. So what am I going to do to satiate my love of movies now that Hollywood's effectively pushed everything way off the table? I'm going to watch all 31 of my VeggieTales movies. Hi guys. So, I've been trying to figure out how to use some of my quarantine in a really fun way because I'm a social person and I'm missing the world and I'm incredibly bored. Now, I'm a huge movie fan and I have a wall of shelves that are just for my movie collection. And there were a series of films that I hadn't watched in a really long time that I wanted to revisit. And those are my VeggieTales movies. Now, for those who don't know, VeggieTales is an animated movie series made to teach Christian values to young children. If you grew up on VeggieTales, you'll know what I'm talking about here when I say that they are masterpieces. They are Martin Scorsese level philosophical cinema. Genuinely try watching Madame Blueberry and The Wolf of Wall Street and tell me they're not the exact same movie because you can't. So today I have with me three 10 episode volumes plus Lord of the Beans, sold separately, of course. And I'm gonna watch all 31 in a row with no break and no sleep. So we're gonna see just how well these movies hold up to me and how good I feel about them in about 20 or so hours. So let's get into it. Hi kids, and welcome to Veggie Tales. I'm Bob the Tomato, and I'm Larry the Cucumber. Right off the bat, I was slightly taken back by how different the animation looked from what I had remembered. I wasn't exactly sure if my eyes were just out of focus, or if the animation truly was as fuzzy as it appeared to be, but it turned out to be the latter. To their credit, though, this is insane for a small group of Bible college dropouts working on a single computer in 1993. It took a team of 110 to create Toy Story, which came out only about a year and a half after, Obviously, that's not a one-to-one -one comparison, but it definitely says something. Bob, I'm a tomato, and I'm here to help you. These first episodes tackle concepts of fear, forgiveness, acceptance, obedience, honesty, and thankfulness. Most of the messages are delivered through meticulously constructed songs that hold up surprisingly well, even to a 19-year-old, though I do have considerable bias. However, now that I'm far more cynical than I was as a child viewer, I definitely found some comedy in areas that I almost certainly didn't when I was younger. Take this scene. Well, speaking of which, it's almost 8 o'clock. Time for the morning milk delivery. Here comes Laura now. Well, she's my favorite. That's your milk shipment? Bro, how many bunnies are you making? Every day they make 14,638 of these little fellas. Are we really expected to believe that you're making that many bunnies with that little milk? Derrickson, how are things on the assembly line? Very well, sir. We just had our weekly shipment of three tires. Three tires? How are we expected to meet our quota on three tires? Who's filling out our invoices? I am, sir. Derrickson, you're fired. There was also a surprising amount of intelligent comedy that I certainly didn't understand as a child. Didn't you minor in aerospace technology at the Happy Tots Preschool? Why, yes! Yes, I did! What'd you need, Jerry? Hidden within Madame Blueberry was even some Rona humor, although it came about 22 years too early. It looks like you could use some stuff. Bro, I need stuff. You got stuff? I'm not allowed to leave the house. I need stuff. Or maybe you need stuff. Hi, I took an econ class once. The general feel of these earlier episodes is, in a word, intelligent. Really? Early VeggieTales manages to skillfully meld easily graspable messages with strangely captivating visuals, amazing voice acting, and jokes that actually land. Not to mention the brilliant earworms that are featured prominently in each episode. Seriously, I want to make the bass line from I Can Be Your Friend my ringtone. Hit it, boys! Have you ever seen a boy with funny clothes? A girl with braces on her teeth or freckles on her nose? Some kids call them oddballs. Some kids call them weird. Is it my imagination? So with the likes of Rack Shack and Benny, Madame Blueberry, and the first two Larry boys already being under the belt, I have to wonder, did this binge session peak early? Oh no. Oh no, my waffle cones. We started strong, yes. 
but Volume 2 was not prepared to disappoint. We start off with King George and the Ducky, and let me just say, they didn't have to go as hard as they did on that Ducky song, but they did. They went hard for us. Because I love my duck. Uh, sir, if I could have a minute. Love my duck. There are some things we must discuss. Unfortunately for my friends and family, this episode is the sole reason that I'm always such a stickler for grammar. I think you mean wasn't. It wasn't the way. It also gives us the greatest love story ever told with Barbara Manatee. Barbara Manatee. You are the one for me. Volume 2 clearly led with a great foot, but it continues on very well with the likes of Esther, which shows us that the Me Too movement was just as prominent in biblical times as it is now. Uh, your Highness, uh, the king was wondering if you could make him a sandwich. Too far. But then, perfectly in the middle of the volume, we're given one of the best Veggie Tales has ever had to offer. Oh, Joe! Little Joe! Yes, Little Joe is among the S-tier VeggieTales episodes. It is, without debate, the greatest Western Bible story ever told. Nowhere else will you find 11 metaphorical cacti selling their brother to a couple of desperados out of jealousy. Nowhere else will you be encouraged to drink more root beer when the opportunity arises. Go in my hands, you a lemon. Just have some more root beer! And nowhere else will you discover the mystery of why Mr. Lunt doesn't have a belly button. Baby, he needs to tell you something. I don't got a belly button. Oh, I mean. Needless to say, this is Big Idea's answer to Pixar's Finding Nemo, to DreamWorks' The Prince of Egypt. The Ballad of Little Joe is a cold strawberry lemonade on a hot day at the beach with your absolute best friends. It's PewDiePie getting married, slaying the Ender Dragon, and hitting 100 million all in the same week. It's raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens. The Ballad of Little Joe is one of the best things in life. While the rest of Volume 2 may not be capable of living up to Little Joe, An Easter Carol does get a special mention since it has an Australian voice actress playing the character Hope. Here we are, Ebenezer. Ebenezer! Would you quit clowning around? We don't have all night! And the rest of the volume definitely leaves a great taste in your mouth by ending with the most wonderfully crafted parody of Indiana Jones that this world has ever gotten. Minnesota Cuke. One of my earliest memories is watching this episode with my sister and playing the DVD Catacombs game that came in the bonus features. Minnesota Cuke calling Martin. Come in, Martin. Minnesota Cuke holds a special place to me because it deals with the subject of bullying. The world, and schools especially, cast a blanket statement to the youth that you shouldn't bully, but saying stop doesn't necessarily mean it will stop. See you in the funny papers, Martin. First of all, see you in the funny papers? What, is that supposed to be like some kind of wicked burn? You're gonna come back, rub your success in the guy's face on Sunday morning while he's having a good honest laugh? Uh, hey bro, not sure if you wanted to check out the funnies this week. Yeah, I did it! What? I beat him! Okay. Okay. So anyway, Marmaduke's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah! I always felt like Min had a really mature approach to dealing with bullies. It shows that it's not always as easy as people usually make it out to be. But ultimately, a lot of the power lies within ourselves. Sometimes we have to outsource to people who are more skilled in problem solving than ourselves. And sometimes we have to look at our situation with some objectivity and learn to show compassion to our bullies. It's possible that some compassion may be exactly what they need to learn to be a better person. This doesn't make sense. No one has ever been kind to me. Why did you do that? Because God gives us the power to love everybody, even our enemies. Or sometimes they just need to be shot into the endless black abyss of space. That works too. Volume 2 was an absolute blast, so can Volume 3 live up to its predecessors? Can this binge session go out with a bang? No, the answer is no. Spoiler alert, Volume 3 sucks. There's a couple of rare gems, but Volume 3 is the VeggieTales equivalent of the last season of How I Met Your Mother. 
Sure, you're stoked to see the episode entirely about Tracy when you're rewatching through the season, but how many bottle episodes vaguely relating to Barney and Robin's wedding are you willing to sit through to get there? Volume 3 has Sherlock Holmes, which, full disclosure, scared me half to death as a child, and Loki still kinda does, with its unnerving imagery in the pre-show The Asparagus of La Mancha. I remember hiding behind the couch whenever the big windmill came around as a kid. I didn't have a couch to hide behind when I was watching through it for this video, so for the first time ever, I manned up and faced my fears. Is it over? Sherlock Holmes has an awesome message about treating your friends with respect, but that's honestly the best message to come out of this volume, and it's in the first episode. Shame on you for not being a better friend to the good doctor. A majority of the following episodes cover the idea of trusting in God, which is itself a great message, but none of these episodes do it quite as well as Daniel in the Lion's Den did way back at the start of Volume 1. We do get the spiritual successor to Little Joe in this volume with Mo and the Big Exit, but it turned out to be a huge letdown. To be fair, it was slightly doomed to fail since the world had already seen The Prince of Egypt, which tells the same story of Moses and is among the greatest pieces of cinema ever conceived. But even disregarding that, Mo and the Big Exit failed to deliver on every front that Little Joe accomplished. By choosing to parody the Lone Ranger as its primary plot device, more effort was put into drawing parallels between the two unrelated stories than went into portraying the story of Moses accurately. Little Joe stood on its own two feet, telling a story of Joseph's rise from slave to vizier in a clever, genre-twisting manner without sacrificing accuracy for familiarity and other entertainment. Hi, ho, sliver! Away! A lot of the remaining episodes lacked the wit and magic that made the early ones so special, and trades in smooth, vibrant animation for awkward-looking textures and character models. The nicest thing I can say about the animation is that it was better than the Netflix VeggieTales, but how much does that really tell you? I can honestly say I'm really happy to be done with Volume 3, but I'm kind of disappointed that it's the last impression I have of VeggieTales on my shelf. Or at least it was until your boy splurged on Lord of the Beans. Lord of the Beans pulls a Daenerys Targaryen and breaks the wheel of what VeggieTales always was. It has a fairly esoteric message that doesn't seem to be rooted deeply in religion, and the episode appears to serve more as simple entertainment than morally driven Christian entertainment but it succeeds as general entertainment. This is how you do a parody. The character designs are absolutely impeccable, and as Tolkien-esque as vegetables can get. It evokes a proportional amount of eeriness into children as Lord of the Rings instills in older viewers, which is a fine line to dance, but the folks over at Big Idea tangled all over it without missing a step. I'm really glad I saved this one for last, because it was like an amazing dessert after a terrible dinner at Tomato Street. I'm really sorry, I didn't realize how morbid that joke was until after I wrote it. I was really just making fun of Tomato Street. I'll issue my official apology on Instagram tomorrow. Well, this has been an interesting and debatably unnecessary utilization of my quarantine, but what have I learned from it? Let's go to the desk. This is the desk, where we like to get a little more analytical about things. That's why I call it the analytical desk. What I've learned from this experience is that the older episodes of VeggieTales really do hold up wonderfully over time, and while the newer episodes really do fall flat, they can't detract from how wonderful the originals are, and how their messages are equally as prominent to teenagers and adults as they are to young children. I, for one, am very excited to share these with my kids someday. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, it was really fun going back and viewing some old nostalgia material. If you're a VeggieTales fan too, go ahead and let me know in the comments what your favorite episode was. And if you liked the video, consider leaving a like and subscribing if you want to see more like it. Until next time, I'm Noah, and stay safe guys.